black holes cannot be seen. And yet, a clever species on a planet in an obscure corner of a spiral galaxy has figured out a way to detect its shadow. This is Cosmic Gupshup, and I am Salman Hamid. A little over a hundred years ago, uh, in 1915, Albert Einstein published uh, his general theory of relativity, in which he described the universe in terms of space and time. Just a year later, another physicist, Carl Schwarzschild, found that one of the implications of this theory was the existence of objects that are called black holes. Now, this was a purely theoretical prediction, but Schwarzschild discovered that you can have some objects where the gravity is so high that the escape velocity from that object would be greater than even the speed of light. And since we know that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, in some sense, this becomes the boundary be between what is known and what can never be known. And the radius around this object is called Schwarzschild radius or also event horizon. Now, this was a purely theoretical idea, kind of like a speculation. Uh, even Einstein didn't believe that black holes would actually exist. But a few decades later, Astronomers, when they were studying the physics of stars, they discovered that we have stars that are 20, 30, 40 times more massive than our sun. And the only state they would end up in, they predicted would be as a black hole. Now, over the last few decades, astronomers have started to find indirect evidence for the existence of these black holes. Uh, for example, uh, you have binary stars, where you have one star orbiting something that, has, that is quite massive, but it is not emitting any light. Astronomers know, well, the other object is most likely a black hole. It's not just stars, but at the centers of large galaxies, pretty much almost all large galaxies, reside not just small black holes, but what astronomers call supermassive black holes, whose masses can go in the range of billions of times more massive than our sun. Uh, in fact, at the center of our own galaxy, Milky Way, there is a black hole. We know that because we have looked at stars and gas clouds zipping by around the center of our galaxy, around something that we cannot see and at speeds that are so high that we can only explain it by the existence of a black hole a few million times the mass of our sun. And then just a few years ago, in 2015, astronomers detected gravitational waves. These are small perturbations of space and time that were the result of a collision between two black holes. So if we have a lot of indirect evidence we know black holes exist, but there was no direct picture of the event horizon. But on April 10th, 2019, astronomers for the first time announced a picture of the event horizon. It is at the, this, there is a black hole at the center of a galaxy M87, located about 55 million light years from Earth. This supermassive black hole is quite big, one of the largest that we know of. It is about 6.5 billion times the mass of our sun. So we know the black hole exists. This particular galaxy also has these huge jets of material coming out from this black hole. In fact, these jets go up to about 50,000 light years into the galaxy. 
Uh, it is like material that is spinning so fast close to the black hole that it is squirting out. You can think of it as uh, if you have a drain and water is going in, but it is moving so fast that some of it squirts out. Kind of like that, you can imagine these jets coming out. Uh, but of course, it is with immense gravity and immense magnetic fields that are collimating these jets. So we know that there is a supermassive black hole at the center of galaxy M87. But how do you take a picture of it? It is really difficult. But astronomers came up with a clever way of using the entire planet, the entire globe, as a telescope. And they, they did that by combining eight different radio telescopes and acting as one. So you have telescopes in Chile, in Mexico, in Hawaii, in Arizona, in Spain, and even in the South Pole in Antarctica. But it is really hard to synchronize these telescopes to combine to make these observations. So astronomers used atomic clocks. They installed atomic clocks in each of these telescopes and synced them together. Now these atomic clocks, actually, they are so accurate, they'd lose, they'd lose less than a second in a million years. But there were other challenges also, because you had to be observing at the same time. And as the Earth is rotating, more telescopes are coming into play. But you need weather to be perfect in all of the sites that you are. But it all worked out. This was difficult. But the resolution, what you needed, you needed to see the black hole at the center of M87. So you needed really high resolution. And one way to think about that is that with this type of resolution, you should be able to look at the features on a cricket ball if it was placed on the surface of the moon. So what did they find? Well, this is the image of the black hole, the event horizon. Now, it's a bit more complicated. And in the first instance, you would say, hey, this just looks like a donut. This is nothing, anything like these simulations that I've seen. Those are so cool. And indeed, some of these simulations you've already seen in this video as well. But just bear with me. What you are seeing is actually not a simulation and hence much cooler. So this ring that you are seeing is light coming from right around the event horizon of this supermassive black hole. Now, Einstein's theory of relativity also predicted that it would bend light as well. So if you are really close to a black hole, photons, light, it also bends. Now, if there is light going towards the event horizon, if it is close to it, and if it bends, the photon bends, they fall into the event horizon, they are gone. You'll never see them again. But if you have light that is close to the event horizon, but then it can go behind it and gets curved, it can go around the event horizon and then it can come back to us. In fact, what you are looking at, it, this ring, are these photons that are coming from all around the event horizon, from the back, from the front, from the side. In some sense, we are seeing the entire event horizon. And this is a silhouette or a shadow because what we cannot see is the actual event horizon. So this is an incredible uh, image. And what you see, there is one other thing that you can notice that on the south side, on the bottom of this image, you see that it's a little bit brighter. And on the top, it's a little bit fainter. This is because the material at the bottom is actually coming towards us. This is something called relativistic beaming. This material is coming towards us, whereas the material on the top is moving away from us. Now, all of these things, including the precise shape of the ring, are stunning confirmation of general theory of relativity. It didn't have to be, but as it turns out, the universe seems to be following the laws that were placed by Albert Einstein in general theory of relativity. And this image is a demonstration of 
the cooperative spirit of our species. But just pause for a moment and think that when you are looking at this image, this, with this ring, you are looking at photons that started the journey very close to the event horizon of a supermassive black hole. They went through the accretion disk and then through the galaxy M87 itself. And then they traveled for 55 million years before encountering this network of telescopes designed by humans to detect the shadow of an event horizon. I think this is an example of why we are curious and what makes us human. Please subscribe to this channel um, somewhere around here and check out other videos as well.